Hello my friends, if you like my work please remember to click thumb up, subscribe to my channel or hit the notification bell to be informed about new videos. I'd just like to say thank you to all my patrons, please join them if you can, the link is in the description below. I'm really excited for today's episode because as you can see the leopard is starting to look amazing. Even though it hasn't been weathered yet, it's already a good eye catcher. I showed it on Instagram and the reaction to it was very positive. So I'm very pleased. Today I will show you how I made some fur for this cat. To complete this task we really need 4 things. Camouflage net, gauze or bandage, paint and glue. For modern vehicles I use camouflage nets from AK Interactive which are available in various colors, from white to dark green. In addition gas as here is also necessary because such a masking system consists of two elements which very often modelers forget. Under the actual green net is a second net that acts as a kind of underlay. Both are joined together and very often you can see it in the pictures especially when the mesh is torn into small pieces. The AK product has edges that are worth cutting off. This can be done with scissors or an ordinary hobby knife. Even cuts are not recommended so don't worry if it looks racked and messy. Now it's worth bending our mesh a bit and it's best to do it in this way. After a few moments it will be a little softer and won't look ironed. Once we have properly cramped it, it's worth stretching it a little over the entire surface to make the holes cut in it slightly larger. You have to be careful with it because too much force can tear the material. We have the net ready so now it's time for gauze. I realized that this is not an ideal solution in this situation because this material is a bit too thick but I haven't found anything better so far. And answering for the question about the producer of this one, truly speaking I don't remember. I'm sure each country has its own producer for medical stuff so you need to check what is available on your market. We need paint and glue to make some colors. Any muted shade of green will be fine and as for glue I suggest pigment cement or heavily diluted PVE glue. After mixing just soak the mesh with paint and dry it. As you can see it absorbs paint very quickly but as long as it is still wet you can color the whole piece even if it seems that you have no paint left. Exactly as seen in the video. Our goal is to give color and strengthen its structure with glue. We can start working with it when it no longer leaves marks on the fingers but it's not yet completely dry. We cut it into small pieces. If you're wondering why, I will explain in a moment why it's so important. I started all work with camouflage by making the simplest and fastest piece which is the barrel and I will immediately explain why it's better to use small or narrow pieces. It just looks better at this scale. Despite the fact that in reality the crew is trying to cover the machine as much as possible, it looks much better in scale when we leave some places uncovered. The most important thing is to follow the old and proven rule. Less is better than more. In addition it's also worth answering the question of what form our masking should take. Is our goal to cover the vehicle nicely or do we want to try to do something similar to this? Should I explain what is more attractive for me? I don't think so. Such jacked masking with hanging elements is definitely more natural and eye-catching in my opinion. And if you want to know I use here CA glue, pigment cement and on other surfaces also PVA glue.
On the whole it will be best seen how I worked on building the entire camouflage. I cut the net with a knife into small pieces and glued it directly to the model with CA glue, which doesn't look good at first, but as I said, it's the basis for later use of the main material, which is the AK net. Of course, it's worth checking how it looks in reality on real vehicles. There are quite a lot of photos on the internet, which at least roughly show how the crews arrange camouflage on these tanks. Generally masking is quite a slow process. Here you can see clippings at an accelerated pace, otherwise it would be boring to watch. Masking the whole model took me about 6 hours with small breaks. I did exactly the same with the camouflage net. I divided it into small pieces and one by one I glued them to the model using previously glued pieces of gauze. PVA glue was best for this, although I also used CA glue in some places. Finally, I completed the masking with individual treats that simulate hanging mesh elements and add variety to the appearance of the entire camo work. Additional pieces of thick rubber can be seen on some vehicles which also serve as camouflage. After applying them to the vehicle, sharp edges which don't exist in nature disappear. This was probably the intention of their use which seems to be quite real looking at the effect the crews get after applying this simple solution. I decided to add such elements on the turret and on the front of the vehicle. For this purpose I used a piece of thin plastic sheet from which I cut pieces of the right size and shape. After shaping I decided to paint them right away. The black primer at the beginning was a good base for colors. The first color is tan earth which I applied with a large brush by tapping the paint on the surface. Then light earth as splashes spread on the surface in a random way. Now they look like smeared with mud. That's exactly what it was about because, thanks to this, I will get brighter accents on the dark body of the vehicle, increasing the contrast. A simple but effective trick.
I used smoke black for chipping and as a result it looks like real rubber skirts. Simple right? Now all you have to do is glue them to the turret and slightly adjust the shape. I glued the same elements to the front of the hull. Now I could back to work on the turret. I did it the same as on the hull, so there will be nothing new here except that you will see exactly how much glue I used to hold the net on the model. This may seem excessive, but it's not. This amount ensured that the net would stick to the place where I fixed it and most importantly in the shape I arranged. And the great advantage of the PVA glue is that after drying it's colorless and completely invisible on the model. If you did enjoy today's video, please like it, write a comment, even to say hello and for all of you who are here for the first time, Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel as I said in the beginning of today's episode. Please do it now and remember that here you will find movies every Monday and often also on Thursdays. And if you have the opportunity, join to my Patreon because your support is highly appreciated and helps me to do what I do here at Cold Demons PL. Thanks to this I will try to give you some interesting content to keep you informed and entertained. Thank you very much. And as always I would like to say thank you to all my patrons who support my work. You are great guys. I hope this list will get longer in each episode and more patrons will join it. And this is how the whole model looks like after the work is done. In my opinion it's a great effect and considering that there is no weathering on it and the nets are also still clean, you can guess how it will look like in the next episode when I complete the weathering stage. Oh, and just remember I also did an open the box episode where I show and talk a bit about this model. I prepared it as always so you can see up close how Border made the parts and what additionally is in the box. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!